What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the NG model September 2024 releases. So after two long months, we finally have the next announcement from NG, as we had the last announcement July 24th, and the hints, last hints were announced July 17th. We do have the hints, thankfully, for this set of releases, and we are looking at a total of 25 planned models, so much smaller than the last several NG sets. So we have one A321, four A350s, numerous 737s, and if I count here, I think I see 11 or so. A majority of them are American registered, which is good news for U.S. collectors. Four 747s with some different November registrations, three triple sevens, and two 787s. So let's see what's going on with NG this month. And our first release looks like NG is going with a new item number, item number sequencing. So that's pretty cool. If I can get the photo to load here, that would be wonderful. But I am not getting anything. First up, and we have another release of the Qatar Qatar Retro Triple Seven. So not sure. I think yeah, they had they had to have done another one before, if I remember right. This is this is the second time that they have announced this, but. I guess this is the NG Light, so that's why we have that different item number there, so that's just how it is. And then the 748, we have a UPS in this case. This is the last 748 UPS, uh, built for UPS. And then the other one is going to be the first 748 for UPS with a Spirit of Joe Sutter sticker. Then moving down, we have another Lufthansa. This is in the new livery. I don't think they've done the new livery 748 yet for Lufthansa. And then the second one is just with a different registration and aircraft name. We have a third one here as well, which was not in the plan, but and that's just how they roll. This one in this case has the Team uh, Deutschland sticker. This is like some type of national sports team. Then we have a, this is, yeah, this is a fantasy, Malaysia 777-300 with the, this is the non-ER variant with Trent engines on it. Um, they they didn't, I guess they did have an order for the triple three at some point, they must have canceled it, so uh, that's that's the kind of fantasies that I do kind of want to see at times, so I, I could be okay with this release. We have an Air Canada triple three, the Go Canada Go Olympics livery. And then we have a 788 for Qatar with the FIFA World Cup. So that is a very old subject at this point. That, that's been almost two years since the World Cup. Then we have another 788 for Qatar. This is the 25th anniversary sticker. And then we have a blank 764. So if you want to make a custom or whatever, you can do that with that particular release. And then we have another one in here. This one is for the A330 800 Neo. And also the 900 Neo. 748i blank model. A bit surprised they didn't do that one earlier. And then we have an 8, 748 freighter variant. So the release is definitely inflated now with all of these extra um, blank model releases. Agian A321 Neo up next. Our sole A321 hint that was planned. We move into the 737-800, so let's see how exciting they are. And to start off, we do have a... I don't know what the... I don't know what the problem is with the website today. The photos are not loading properly. We have a China Eastern 730-700. This is the Yunnan Peacock special livery. I see another Air China. This one is the same livery, just on a sister ship aircraft. Then we have a... Bonza Flare Hybrid 737 Max 8. A couple of these were floating around in Canada recently as Bonza went into administration not long ago. So let's see. Next up, very okay, this is good. There is an American 737 Max 8 for those that desperately need one because I know the um the Gemini release from a few years ago is a bit hard to find now. So if you do want one, this is a good opportunity to get it. November 338 Romeo Sierra. And there's the Evo Blue Max 8, so that's another good release from NG. So finally getting on the right track with some of these choices here. And then there's a Max 8 again for United. This is the Connecting the World, Ensuring a Better Future special livery. I think that one ha yeah, that one has been repainted. I just I just saw that playing on Flight Radar yesterday. United Together Max 8. I know Gemini did this one previously. 
Um, I think that one, as far as I'm concerned, is still flying, but I will take a quick look on flight radar just to be sure. Um, yep, that one is still flying, so that one's a relevant, relevant special livery. Then we have the Aviate Title Max 84 United, so definitely doing a whole bunch of them, trying to get them out as much as they can. And then another, we have the Desert Gold Retro and the Canyon Blue Retro for NG Light. So it looks like they're going to use this NG Light brand pretty prominently, especially for releases that they haven't done in a long time. Registration is not listed accurately on the NG website, but the CGI does show it correctly. Then we have a Comax C919 for Air China, the first available for them. And then there's also a China Southern, that's their first airframe. Japan Airlines 788 with the Expo 2025 Osaka livery. Very nice special livery from Japan. And then we have, and this is another of these Panda Route A350s. They keep they keep doing these like they're going out of style, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. So I think that's like the third or fourth time that they've done the Panda Route livery. And then we have another one here. This is just without the Ultimate Collection um, on it. Then we have China United 738 Ultimate Collection, City of Wenzhou, I think is how you say that. And then Triple Crown 1, okay, okay, I can live with that one. I think I do kind of need the new Triple Crown 1. I never got the old one uh, back when it was on the 700, so this may be a good pickup for me at some point down the road, but I don't know what, what I'm going to do because I've got too many other planes that I want. So I'll put, I'll, I'll put that on my list either way. And there we go, that is the releases for... NG this month. So the Max 8 for United and American, they definitely help with this release, at least from an American perspective. So certainly a step in the right direction. But really, we still kind of have the same pitfalls in this release. Like we have several Lufthansa 748s um, when we probably don't really need three of them announced in the same release. Um, the UPS 748s, I can kind of understand since they haven't really touched on that subject yet, though I think there are other... <clears throat> more notable subjects out there for NG that could definitely be done. But is it just, you know, is it really, are they really aware of these subjects or are they just intentionally choosing not to do them? Then the NG Light brand, it is interesting to see that coming back. Um, this one with at least uh, three releases this month and the MSRP is pretty low. So I'm not sure what that's going to entail because as far as I know, they didn't really have any problems with the original mold for the Max 8 or the Triple 3. So I'm not sure if these are supposed to be just units that they did make during production, but they weren't up to the same standard as the rest of them. So we'll see what, what the photos look like when they come out. I'll be eager to see how they turned out and if they do have some minor deficiencies that maybe some people would be more tolerant of, which, you know, I would probably be in that group as well. But since I already have, you know, the the two Southwest uh, Retros from Gemini, I won't be picking those up, but I will be interested to see the Qatar Retro um, with this NG Light branding, see if they're, if it is still as good of quality as it is with the rest of the NG releases. And then we have another Fantasy release, which is just kind of the norm for NG, really. There's nothing really I can report back on that other than that's just, that just seems to be kind of the norm every so often with NG doing a particular Fantasy plane, but they said that they used to have the triple three on order but they never operated it so i guess i guess that's kind of realistic but just depends on who you ask and otherwise we're kind of looking at the you know same song probably the 10th or 15th first at this point um so not really a whole lot to write <clears throat> to write home about outside of the like the 737s which are definitely a step in, in the right direction for at least the american collectors but even still we do have a long ways to go for ng to sort of change their release strategy, which is what I heard originally a couple months ago, but I guess that strategy doesn't seem like it's going into full force. I don't know what's going on, and, you know, just a lot of, just a lot of question marks that are definitely not going to get answers applied to them, since we don't really know what's going on with NG behind the scenes. And another thing I do want to note, this is what I heard recently, and this and this has gone gotten around uh, quite a bit within the community, but the whole, the year of the classic thing that NG was talking about at the start of the year, it seems like that was a phrase that got lost in translation. And what that means is when people heard year of the classic, they assumed, myself included, 
Uh, we all assume that it would mean a slew of retro releases for, you know, like the North American markets and European markets. Um, but evidently what I understand is, is that they were talking about it as something for the Chinese collectors, that they'd be doing releases from the early 21st century, which, you know, trying to define what a classic or a retro really is is very subjective, so it's hard to pinpoint an exact definition when it comes to what a retro is these days. But the fact that we that the fact that has been misinterpreted quite a bit is uh, very surprising. But given that it was made initially on an, the announcement was made initially through WeChat, which is a Chinese social media website, um, the fact that it did get lost in the translation is not too surprising now that I think about it. But then again, everyone has been wanting NG to step up with their releases, and this whole year the classic thing. If it had been what we thought it would have been would have definitely propelled NG well ahead of the rest of the competition. But so far, the rest of the competition looks to be staying ahead by just a slight margin. So hopefully NG can continue to turn things around when it comes to the release choices and all that and other components of their releases. Because really, if I had to be honest, the only good thing that I could really say about them right now is the hard product. The hard product itself is really good, but the way that they're using it isn't exactly up to snuff with what other collectors would want. And that's just kind of that's just kind of the summary of NG right now, at least from my perspective and how I currently view them at this point. And that's kind of why I've been a little, you know, hesitant on NG lately. Um, it has been apparent in other release videos of mine whenever I've reacted to their releases and what they've had to put out. But at least here with this particular release, I do think this is this is solid, at least for just the 737s. I mean, Triple Crown 1, the American United Max 8s, um, I know those are in very hot demand right now, so definitely try to get those while you can. I think those are going to be hot sellers. I will try to get my hands on Triple Crown 1 later down the road. Again, I've got, I've ordered a lot of planes. Um, I think I have four on order right now. There's three that are pre-orders and then one that's supposed to be coming in soon, but as far as I understand, I have not received any shipping confirmation, so I don't know when that's going to be arriving, but I'll be keeping an eye on that. And once I do get that confirmation, I'll be sure to send out a notice on my Instagram story as to when that unboxing will be coming out. So there we go. That is the NG releases. Apologies about the long, not necessarily a rant, but just the rambling session that I had when it came to the the whole NG situation right now. I figured you know, provide another perspective on it since there's been a lot of talk about them lately and what, what's been happening with, with their release choices and other components of the company. You know, there, there's just a lot that goes into it, really, and it's hard to definitively answer every question that every collector has. So I can, you know, I don't know any more information than what the rest of the community does on that. I'm just only reporting on what I've seen on, you know, online forums or, you know, other sources. So I can't really answer too many questions, unfortunately. I wish I could, but I don't have that kind of power. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.